I was a real geek when I was a child uh, and all the way through my education. So after I, the summer after I did my GCSEs, uh, most of my friends were off getting drunk uh, in illegal barn parties. And I was working as a strawberry picker at Tully's Farm for £2.80 an hour. So I would get up very early in the morning because it was a very hot summer. But yeah, I'd get up at five, pick strawberries until about midday and then I'd go home and in the afternoons I would read Shakespeare. So I read every single Shakespeare play, one a day, and I made notes on all of them. And I still have this folder <laughs> with all of my notes on all of the plays where I ask myself ridiculous questions like, why would he do that? <laughs> and I completely misinterpret entire plots. Uh, but I was hooked. I mean, I, I loved the plays. I found um, this fantastical world of uh, all kinds of people um, and I would think about them the next day when I was picking again the following day. I'd think about the characters that I'd just met and I'd look forward to meeting the next set of characters that afternoon. I'm a massive fan of Macbeth, mainly because it's the thing when you worked on something recently, you always really want to kind of, you end up loving that the most. But I think the amazing thing, obviously Shakespeare's so amazing, and then really you add a whole other layer to it, which is even more exciting. And, you know, the stories, the drama, the characters, the ready-made, so for me, having opera, it's like a natural thing. If you're an opera composer, why wouldn't you want to set some of the best drama? So it really lends itself. And if you look at so much of the music we're going to, we've been covering and talking about today, it's full of great music, excitement, but also you've got so many colours that you can access that, um, forgive me, if you're just speaking, you, you can't. So it's got to be a good thing. Well, this is the first foray into opera for me. So I think over the last few years, I've I've directed lots of plays and I have um, happened to have seen, for, for one reason or another, a few operas, my first sort of few operas, and I found myself getting intrigued by uh, the power of music and what song storytelling offers that spoken storytelling doesn't. Um, so delving into this project so far is really fascinating, looking at um, the limitations of text and the raw emotion of music and of the, the, the power of, of sung emotion um, but equally the, the kind of the structure of music which can be equally limiting when you want to be able just to kind of speak and feel and riff and jazz in a way that you know the bars or the bar structure kind of won't won't let you uh, so I guess I'm, I'm finding the, the joys and the, um, the brick walls uh, of, of both and beginning to wrestle with how with how the two of those things work together is really fascinating. We're going to be hearing quite a bit from Verdi's Macbeth, some of the great sleepwalking scene, for example, a bit, but it might not be quite how you've heard it before. Um, you're also going to hear some uh, things from the edges of the repertoire, but nothing too funky. Um, we've got a bit from Goethe's Ten of the Shrew. You should say that in German, but forgive me. Uh, but it's great music, but something a little bit off piste We've also got some classics in terms of we've got a bit of uh, Britain in there, in some of Night's Dream. We've also got, we, we couldn't do this project and leave out two greats of West Side Story and Kiss Me Kate. So there's something for everything, but we've been really trying to make sure we got some music that hits, you know, lots of different emotions and speaks in different ways. But what's brilliant about this project is we're able to Re rework some of the music around the text and do things that, that normally as a music director conductor I'm not allowed to do, so it's quite <laughs> fun. <laughs> You're Shakespeare and they'll all 